We are back on the Falcons Audible presented by AT&T. Same crew, same location, same storylines. Maybe the storylines change a little bit each week, but we are going to talk about the Atlanta Falcons. Thanks so much for joining us on AtlantaFalcons.com, Spotify, YouTube, iTunes, however you get your podcast. This is Dave Archer, DJ Shockley. I'm Derek Rackley once again. Joining you after a Falcons victory, and the Atlanta Falcons keep finding ways to keep their hopes alive, keeping the postseason is uh is a is something that you can like grasp you can mm. grab it out in the distance mm. however each week they're gonna have to keep keep battling in order to make that happen here's what we're gonna talk about today in the show uh of course we're gonna get some quick reactions guys are gonna tell us what the win last weekend's against carolina meant in the grand scheme of things has the falcons identity changed we're starting to see a run offense a defense making plays being opportunistic and then we'll fast forward and talk about the 49ers game. Guys, it just seems like every week now is monumental if they want to keep their hopes alive in the postseason. And then we'll talk actually a little bit about the three games after San Francisco. And, and we'll get into it more. But, you know, players and coaches, they always want to think one week at a time. Mm. We ain't got to. We're done. We, we, don't we, can, we can go further than that. No okay, doubt. Good. And so can you. You guys can look further than that. So that's what we're going to do. All right. So let's, let's get into it, guys. Um, here's your quick hitter. One or two sentences, Arch. I'm going to start with you. What did last <laughs> – what you laughing at? My bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. My bad. <laughs> he's laughing like he's saying it's never going to happen in one or two sentences. Remember, the pressure gets on your shoulders too, okay? <laughs> I'm going to ramp it up. It, it depends on what Arch does. If Arch <laughs> – if he goes by the rules, then hey. If he runs on, you're going to run on? No doubt. All right, Arch, give it to us. One or two sentences or more. <laughs> what did the Falcons win against Carolina last weekend mean in the grand scheme of things? You're still in the mix. I mean, that's as easy as you can yeah. say it. Ooh, okay. All right. What you got? Now you got to keep it short and sweet. Dang. You can't do that. How about, how about this? How about this? The team has bought into the staff and coaching. Okay. That's a good one. He he, kind of like, uh, he went Barry White, but not Barry White voice. You know, <laughs> no, like, not he as tried deep. to get it not real quiet to like, to like bring some power and momentum. Like, well, well I'm going to be honest. I was thrown. I did team. not expect that from Arch. I was the thrown. Team. Hold, hold on. The team has bought into the staff. Yeah, because in my mind, I was still going through it. <laughs> how I could break down my sentence to be a little bit less than Arch, but I couldn't do it. So. All right, so I like it, guys. I mean, short and sweet, um, the keeping their hopes alive. Team is buying into what the coaches yeah. are selling. Sometimes it takes longer than others. And, you know, as you, when you're in the broadcasting world or your former players or a combination of the both, maybe you start to see things. DJ starting to see a little bit that maybe the guys are starting to settle into their roles. You know, second week, third week in December. You never know when it's going to be, uh, but it happens. So let's talk a little bit about DJ. I'm going to come right back to you. Is the, is the identity of this team changed, right? We thought with, okay, Matt Ryan, we don't know what's going to happen with the running back situation. We don't know what's going to happen with this offensive line that's still kind of trying to find their way. thought maybe it's going to be a passing offense. Maybe mm -hmm. you just put it on the shoulders of Matt Ryan. But mm -hmm. now we're seeing balance week after week after week in the running game. We're starting to see some defense being opportunistic, couple straight weeks with defensive touchdowns. Has the identity of this team changed? Is it evolving what would the word that you would use? Rack, I'll say this. I say the, the identity has not changed. I think we're just starting to see what the identity is and what it should be. Because I think you come into this season and you look at some of the moves that Arthur Smith started with. You brought in Mike Davis. Mike Davis, you didn't bring him here to, you know, I know he had some, you know, had a bunch of catches in Carolina, but you brought him in, in here to be a tough physical runner. Mm -hmm. And it's similar to what you had when he was in Tennessee. Uh, you go in and you think about how many tight ends we brought into camp. What do we have, like eight tight ends in mm -hmm. camp? <laughs> that tells you, hey, this is going to be a team that not only wants to use the run game, but also you can use it in a pass game. I don't think we came in expecting to be a pass first team, but I thought from day one you want this team to be tough, physical, smart, some of the things that he mentioned as the, as the season started. And I think we're starting to see that identity come to fruition now. And it looks like now we're finally getting identity. But I think this has been what Arthur Smith has wanted it to be since day one. You want to be able to run the football. You want to be able to use play action. You want to be balanced. And because it wasn't working at the beginning of the season, it looked like you were pass heavy mm -hmm. because you hadn't settled into what your identity was. But I think now you're starting to see it because everybody, like I mentioned when we opened up, has started to buy into what this offense should look like. So I think on both sides of the ball, the identity has been the same. Think about Dean when he brought Dean Pease in, he's always been an aggressive type of coach. Yeah. He's always been a yeah. guy that's, you know, from the Baltimore days, Tennessee days, whatever it's been, he gives you a bunch of different looks. Now we look at where we're at right now in the part, latter part of this December, 
every time you turn the tape, every time you hear Arch calling the game, they got some exotic looks going on defense. You're getting pressure. You're getting turnovers. You're starting to get to the quarterback. You're starting to, to look the way that it was expected when you started this season. So I think the identity has always been there, but now you're starting to see it more because it's starting to come out in actual game action. And Archie talked a little, he, he was kind of alluding to the defensive side of the ball. We Yeah, we mentioned the turnovers. We mentioned putting points on the board with the turnovers, but now stopping the run as well, which has been a big issue. The last time we played Carolina, wasn't able to do it as well, but they did. They held them under 100 yards. Even after the first drive, Cam Newton goes down and punches it in. You're thinking, okay, maybe he's going to find his rhythm in a running game, but it was pretty much done after that point on. Yeah, I think that the thing that sticks out to me is it, it kind of piggybacks what Shock's talking about. They want to play physical football, okay? That means run it, stop the run. That's easy. You can say that, but now you've got to get guys in position to do that. We knew that the offensive line was kind of going to be who they are. Jalen Mayfield kind of growing to that left guard position. Can Hennessy be your center? It's his first year starting at center, and you got those two young guys on the right side. How do they begin to kind of get an idea of what it is it is to be a physical offensive line? Can't practice it in the NFL, okay? You can't hit anybody. So that it takes to develop. I remember when I was playing, you developed that identity in training camp because yes. you beat the hell out of each other yep. until you got it, and then both sides of the ball were that. It kind of develops during the year. So to piggyback shock, they, they have been able to get there. On the defensive side, it's been decidedly different because they've changed personnel. And now Mike Pinnell and Grady Jarrett and big guys in the middle uh, have, have created a physicality in the middle of the defense that has now allowed Deion Jones and these different linebackers yep. to run and get to the football. But it's shored up the middle of the defense. I still think they need to work on the perimeter. I think their perimeter defense still gets vulnerable from time to time. Sure. So it's a, prog uh, a progress scenario. But – there's no question that they've changed the, or the mentality has begun, like you said, has been developed on the offensive side, and it's been getting the right personnel in to make it happen on the defensive side. Yeah, I mean, we saw early on in the season it was Grady Jarrett was making a lot of those plays up the middle, and now it's kind of complementary defense. They're starting to get the stops that they need. The linebackers are flowing side to side. Seems like we talked a little bit about Deion Jones, and, and he made some big hits in that game last weekend. Um, and then the secondary, making plays, continuing to make plays. So it's encouraging for them. Uh, on the defensive side of the ball. And I would say, I would piggyback on you guys saying, I don't necessarily think that the identity is changing. I think that they're just playing complementary football. Some weeks your offense is going to have the advantage. Some weeks the defense is going to have the advantage. And also, you're going to take advantage of what the other team is doing, right? Cam Newton, not polished right now. Made a couple mistakes. Atlanta made them pay for it, right? So, mm -hmm. I don't know if I would say either that the identities change. They're just kind of finding ways to put points on the board, get stops, and get wins, which is, in this league, that's all you need to do. This episode in part brought to you by The Home Depot. Everything you need for your next home improvement project is just a tap away on The Home Depot app. The Home Depot app digital toolbox gives you access to how-to guides, project calculators, and image search, so you'll know exactly what you need to pick up. With the tap of the finger, you can rent and reserve the right tools for the job. Also, browse through millions of items from top brands that you can have delivered right to your door. Whatever your project, find exactly what you need with the Home Depot app. Download the Home Depot app today. So let's fast forward. Atlanta's going to go on the road this week, and they're going to face the San Francisco 49ers, a very important game. It seems like every game at this stage of the season for Atlanta is going to be important going on the road guys we've talked about this all season long seems like the atlanta's in a better position when they go on the road they're more comfortable winning games on the road than they have been at home which seems backwards yeah. right yeah so what do dave the falcons need to do against san francisco in order to get the win as they got to travel across the country well just what they've been doing to get wins in two of their last three games they're gonna have to control the Kyle Shanahan running game. He wants to run the football. We saw it when he was here as the offensive coordinator. They want to run it, play action off of it. So you're going to have to be able to stop the run. And that's not just the guys running the football from the backfield. Debo Samuel's a problem because they like to hand him the football across the formation on jet sweeps. They'll toss him the ball out of those formations. Uh, George Kittle is a kid, they'll, a guy they'll hand the football to. Their tight end is a guy that can carry the football. So you're going to get 
a much more diverse look, different guys carrying a football, but make no mistake, it's about stopping the run. Mm -hmm. You've got to get the run stopped. On the other side of the football, this is a good defense. Once again, you're going to get challenged. This was the number two defense in the league last Sunday that you played against Carolina. This is the number eight defense in the league you're coming up against in San Francisco. You know they've got some talent, uh, so you've got to be able to find a way to move them off the ball. The reason this team can't just be pass happy is because I think it makes the offensive line vulnerable. I think they're still still trying to adjust to uh, pass protections and, and playing in concert there. So you have to be able to run the football to have some effectiveness in the run game. DJ, what sticks out to you in this matchup where Atlanta can take advantage and try to come away with a win? You know what, I, I think it's one of those ball games where uh, the Falcons have found – uh, I think what we say their identity in the last couple of weeks is just being able to run the football on the road. I think when you're able to run the football on the road, that gives you an opportunity to, one, control the clock and control the ball like Arch mentioned, but also you can control the atmosphere which you're in. And when you're pounding a team, when you're, you, when you're, you're getting four, five, six yards a chunk and you're allowing you know, your, yourself to be good on second and third down, that gives you an opportunity to be one of those teams that's going to score a lot of points. And I think if you can go down – or go out to San Francisco and do that and put more pressure on their offense to score more points, I think that, that puts you in a, a better situation. It, I mean, this is one of those ball games where it, it's set up where teams are, are, are pretty similar in what they want to do on both sides of the ball. Uh, obviously, everybody knows Kyle Shanahan from his days here as an offensive coordinator and the things he wants to do. Arch mentioned it, play action pass, all that kind of stuff. The Falcons going to have to be disciplined and what they see. And I think the biggest thing is you, you got to slow Debo down. And mm -hmm. for years, it's been about stopping the tight end. We've always had issues covering tight ends for as long as I remember. And now you got another guy in Debo who, you know, I was looking at some of the numbers, you know, 33 rushes for over 200 yards, seven yards a, a carry. And then you talk about he's had 93 targets, uh, them throwing the football to him. He's going to get the football in his ball game. He could be one of those guys when you talk about on defense side be a wrecker. He could be a guy that could really hurt you. Every time you turn on any highlights from San Francisco, it looks like it's Debo Samuel running into an end zone. So if you want to make sure you won this ball game, find out where he is. One of the prescriptions that's going to help you do that is, and it's the old adage, hey, stay on the field. You don't have to worry about the guy. Okay, mm -hmm. you keep Debo Samuel standing over there drinking yep. Gatorade. Yep. He's got, And that's what the run game's been able to do. Okay, the last three weeks, this team has run the ball for over 120 yards over the last three weeks. you got to go all the way back to 2017, the playoff team, where they put together three games of 120-plus yards rushing. I mean, that's a big deal. You think about making, changing who you are and personality. It's been a long time since they were able to do that. Uh, they've, put, they've run for over 100 yards in four of the last five games. What's that do? Okay, that changes what third down looks like. Yeah. Okay, so because your success on first and second down directly relates to that. In their last three games, they're converting 49% of their third downs are the Falcons. The four previous games? 24%. That's what the run game is doing for them, and it's freeing Arthur Smith up to make brilliant play calls like screen against full-out blitz, getting Kyle Pitts in the left flat and getting him the football to keep the ball and keep your four-minute offense on the field so you can kill the clock and win the football game. It's freeing him up as a play caller. That's what the run game has been able to do for them, and that's why it's so important to carry it forward. And, guys, I like that point because even – again, I know we're talking about San Francisco, but going back to last weekend, they had at least two or three third down and ones where they lined up, they turned around, they handed the ball off, and they picked up the first down. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that's encouraging to me as somebody that's covering it, somebody that's invested in it, because you should be able to turn around and hand the ball off in third and one and feel comfortable about picking up the first down. Early in the season, I'm not sure that was the case. Well, and they were willing to let Matt Ryan go get it. Right. Matt Ryan QB ran sneaks, yeah. three quarterback sneaks yeah. for first downs in short yarded situations, yeah. and they were they didn't do that before. Said, "Hey, why turn around? Let's get Ryan. He's six five, two hundred twenty five pounds. Go get the first down." And he did. You know, guys, the other thing you kind of touched on it, and two of the things that stick out to me because I had San Francisco on a game I called on radio earlier this year. And George Kittle was not in the lineup. He was hurt. He was out for about a month this year. And since George Kittle has been back in the game, he has been the George Kittle that everybody has known about. He's been back for six weeks. He's been over 100 yards receiving three of those times. And he's coming off a 13-catch performance last weekend for 150 yards. Yeah. He is a very talented tight end. And he's got I think he's got six or seven touchdowns since he has come back. They're going to continue to try to find him. So that's that's one of those areas. You talked about some issues covering up the tight end. They're going to have their hands full because yeah. this kid's very talented. He's okay. one of the 
the top tight ends in the league. So they're going to feed him the ball. But I think there's going to be opportunities, Dave, just like there was last weekend. Jimmy Garoppolo is a starter in the NFL, but I'm not going to say he's anywhere near a top-tier quarterback. I think he's got 17 touchdowns and eight picks this year. There will be opportunities to either get to him, deflect passes, or potentially get their hands on another interception. And again, when you're playing on the road, you got to find those ways to steal possessions, and I think that's an opportunity where Atlanta can take advantage of somebody like Jimmy Garoppolo. Get the stops on George Kittle and try to find a way to take the football away from their offense. So we talked about it initially, guys. Let's Let's move past the San Francisco game. We're not going to sit here and say that, hey, Atlanta's going to already win it. But I want to talk about what is the Falcons schedule stack up like after San Francisco? Dave, you've had a chance to take a look at it. The three games they have, Detroit, Buffalo, New Orleans. Again, just put aside what happens in San Francisco. What does that schedule tell you? What, what kind of speaks to you when you read those three teams to close out the season? Well, two of them are at home. So the first thing it speaks to me is you need to win some games at home. Yes. And this is going <laughs> to give you an opportunity to do that. And yeah. make no mistake, just because Detroit's coming in here and they've got one win under their belt, that is not going to be a rollover game for them. They're looking to build some momentum into their offseason. I've been on some teams like that have struggled. So... And Detroit's got some players on it, and they've played a lot of close football games. To think you're just going to roll your helmet out there and beat Detroit the day after Christmas, that's not necessarily going to happen. We know the Buffalo game. We saw If you watched the New England game here a couple of nights ago where the wind was blowing 40 miles an hour, can you run it against that Buffalo defense? Can they run it against your defense? That'll be interesting to see what the conditions are. Yeah. Uh, could be a whiteout for all we know when we yeah. get up there. And you've already beat New Orleans. So, the thing that tells me is you got to take care of this weekend because this is kind of a de facto playoff oh, yeah. game this weekend. Yeah. You beat the Niners and all of a sudden you jump into that sixth spot or something in the playoffs. But it also tells me that it's very manageable mm -hmm. that if you can you can negotiate this thing into some postseason play. Now you got to go play. Yep, we're not not saying that, but um, but it's there for the taking. I, th I guess is probably the best saying I can use. It's there for the taking if you want to go get it. Yeah, and we're we're moving past it and uh, the, the San Francisco game this weekend. And you mentioned Detroit, Dave. That's going to be you know DJ. One of the biggest things is Atlanta cannot look past Detroit, right? No. As you mentioned, one ten and one, I believe their record is. Can't look past them, but. Those three games, how do you feel like that schedule stacks up? It's similar to what Arch mentioned is games that the way you've played, you feel like games you should be able to win. Mm -hmm. And I think you come into the season, you say, all right, got that Buffalo game at the end of the year. The first thing you think about is like, Arch mentioned, what is the weather going to be like? That's a big deal, obviously. But now as the season progresses, you think about some of the other things that, that are going on. And I think for this Falcons team, it's going to come down to, I think, the Falcons defense. I'll be honest, because you talk about – the Detroit game aside, you think about Buffalo coming here with a quarterback, well, a quarterback in Josh Allen who can run, can move. We struggle with quarterbacks creating and making things happen against our defense. If you can find ways to do that. Now, this is Buffalo team, five of their six losses come within six points. The mm -hmm. only, you know, game that, that was, was crushed was the, the, the Colts game where they lost 41-15. to But then you talk about the Saints, Al Kamara coming back. You saw what he did. I think he had 31 touches versus the Jets in their previous game. So you're thinking about guys that can control the game and be real game records for you. Josh Allen for the Bills and then Alvin Kamara, obviously for the Saints, are big issues for the Falcons defense. And if you can control those, you got a good chance of coming out of those ball games with the win. But I think the most important thing is you got to win at home. Yep. I mean, you win ball games at home. We have struggled at home to win ball games, and that's kind of been the theme of the season. Hey, you've been great on the road, but now if you want to get into the playoffs, home is where you would do it. And you would think that bodes well for you. You got to find a way to do it one way or another. Yeah, it's it's funny because even back when you and I were playing DJ in the early to mid 2000s, and Dave, you know this too, it was like they always said, win your games at home, try mm. to split on the road, mm -hmm. right? So if you go in a 16 game season, mm -hmm. eight and oh at home, four and four on the road, you're 12 and four, you're in the playoffs, you're yeah. in the driver's seat. <laughs> Obviously, that's a little bit of a different scenario yeah. right now for Atlanta, but you're right, it's the winning at home has been a little bit of a struggle. They have to win the Detroit game, obviously. Buffalo, as it stands right now, is a playoff team, and you guys talked about it. Just so you guys know, if you hadn't looked at the calendar, that game at Buffalo is on January 2nd, mm -hmm. okay? we could You mentioned you could have lake effect. I mean, you may not even be able to see anything, yeah. and it could be clear. You just never know when you're playing in Buffalo at that time of the season. Well, our great producer, Sam Larson, said, what, it's going to be in the 20s, Sam, right? Sam's already looked up the – 
the, the weather prediction. What, two and a half weeks so, out? Somewhere like that. Yeah, yeah. That's what he's, he says he's looked <laughs> yeah, it up that's, already. He's that, ready. He's that's probably go. very accurate. Very he's, accurate. He's moonlighting for us as a meteorologist. What, you know, there's, there are some things of concern. It's not all rosy uh, with the club. I mean, obviously, you're in position. But uh, Matt Ryan is now thrown for under 200 yards in six games this year. Yeah. You've got to go back five years and add all five years True. up that he's thrown for under 200 yards in a game. That would be five years of work this year. So – you need the run game because we haven't been as explosive on offense. You're not getting the 15-plus yard plays. We had three this last game. Uh, I think that adds up to about 65 on the year. Do the math in, in the amount of games you played. That's not a lot of explosives, which means you're having to work that much harder. And if you get short field opportunities like they got this weekend, now defensively they played well, took the football away, and limited Cam Newton and P.J. Walker to what they were. But if you get short field opportunities you don't cash them in, that's going to come back to haunt oh, yeah. you. So those yeah. are things they have to fix. And and I talked to Arthur Smith yesterday, and I said, uh, it's always nice to fix stuff. We talk about this all the time when you win football games. That's something they have to get done. The sense of urgency you have as a defense when there's a sudden change situation, and I got a short field, I got to defend, I got to force a field goal, I got to force them off the field in three downs. That has to be the same thing on offense as well. We've got short field. We've got to go for the juggler right there. We've got to go put points on the board yeah. and put them on right away. I'm not seeing that enough. And so those are some of the concerns you continue to move forward with. You know, guys, we've talked about this for the last few weeks, and it's kind of, to me, it continues to be the story is the margin for error is so small right now when you're in this position. And granted, we're talking about playoffs, but I think it's also – it's fair to state that, yes, those are the three games that, that they have after San Francisco. But right now, San Francisco currently ahead of Atlanta in the playoff picture. Washington currently ahead of Atlanta because of the tiebreaker. Eagles currently ahead of Atlanta, right? So that's why all of these games are so important. San Francisco, Detroit mm -hmm. at 110-1. Yeah. You just never know because if – the Washington or the Eagles end up winning. They're always going to end up staying a pace ahead of Atlanta because of the head to head, assuming nothing else crazy ends up happening throughout the course of the, um, the division of the season. Let me quantify the Matt Ryan stat that I threw out there, by yeah. the way, six, six times under 200 yards. And I'm not suggesting that Matt can no longer throw the ball well enough to do that. We know he can, because he's put up, I think three, 300 yard games is that is a, an effect that, like you're talking about. I'm just wanting to get back to your point that the margin for error is very small. This is not a tremendously talented team all over the spot. So you have to be hitting on all cylinders to create those opportunities to get 200-plus yards and 120 yards on the ground. That doesn't happen every, every weekend. So, uh, But it does mean that everybody is going to have to sense the sense of urgency yeah. on every drive. And, and so Matt Ryan can still get it done, and we still have receivers that can go get it. But you can't miss – and you can't miss a block when you got a guy running a double move that's open for a touchdown and my quarterback's getting hit in the face because he can't get the ball out. Those kind of things are happening. That's what's creating this little bit little bit of a deficiency in the pass game, not necessarily anybody's talent level. Yeah. Okay? I just want to throw that out there. No, no, I completely get you because you think about and, – and, guys, I was watching the Green Bay game on Sunday night, and I would say that a team like Green Bay offensively they probably have a little bit more room for mistakes, right? Mm -hmm. But you watch and they try, they have some longer developing routes. Aaron Rodgers has time to mm -hmm. let those routes develop. That has not been the story for throughout the course of the season consistently for Atlanta. Maybe you can make up for a mistake if you get protection and have a guy like Aaron Rodgers. Matt Ryan still is just as capable as Aaron Rodgers. Maybe not the same type of weapons downfield. Devontae Adams, one of the best in the game. But How much confidence does an offensive line draw from what the, the stretch we talked about? Three consecutive games of 120-plus yards. No sacks on Ryan this mm -hmm. weekend. Now, he got hit a few times. But that group did not give up a sack. Give Mike Davis a ton of credit for stepping up and shortening a couple linebacker necks as oh, they yeah. were coming on blitzes. But from a confidence standpoint, what do you think, Shaq? It's huge. It's huge. I mean, you think about when we came into the season, there were a couple of games where all the conversation was the offensive line is letting us down. How many times are is Matt Ryan getting hit? How many times he's getting sacked? How many times he's not able to get the football off? And then the last three ball games, there's nothing like being able to run the football yeah. for an offensive lineman. They oh, absolutely. live and die for those situations to put it on their back. And that's where their Super Bowl is won, where you can turn around and hand it off and they can roll great guys. Or you, you see two guys combo block and get up on a linebacker and you see those two guys excited. Those are the things that gives – that offensive line confidence, and I think this team is only growing 
in that in that fashion. So I think what Arch mentioned is is a huge facet of where this team is headed. And I remember that exact same play Arch is talking about. Uh, Carolina brings a, a six man pressure. Mike Davis steps up in the A gap and just puts his face mask right on him. And guess what we do? Talk about third down. Hits Gage on an in cut route for a big third down completion. You go in and score. I mean, those are the things that don't show up on the stat sheet. But each offensive lineman did their particular job. Picked up a guy. They had an edge rusher coming off the edge. You, you, you see McGarry come off his double team and, and get just enough of the guy coming off the edge. And Mike Davis steps in the A-gap, and you pick up that six-man pressure. Gage wins on the outside, wins a one-on-one. We talked about that as well, mm-hmm. as we need guys to create separation and win when you get those one-on-one spots. Those are those are big plays in the ballgame that show up on film that not a lot of people around the country may talk about, but inside that – that, that meeting room, when they turn on the tape, they're going to see each guy doing their job, and they're going to see a nice pocket. They're going to see the conversion, and that's where the confidence is built when you get that get that opportunity to, to go do it again when you you play the next ball game. I love that you bring that up, and, w- and we'll finish it with this because you could go back to Pop Warner. You can go to high school and shoot. I coach softball, right? I coach girls softball. The word confidence sometimes gets thrown around, mm-hmm. but when you have it, it's dangerous, <laughs> Yeah, right? And you're starting to see a little bit with the offensive line. And that could that could carry over to everybody. It carries over to Matt Ryan. It carries over to the running backs. It carries over to the defense. You start playing with confidence. You play free. You know you're going to get the job done. And not think, maybe right. I'm going to get the job done. Because right. when you play in maybes, that's right. when you end up getting beat. So let's see if the Atlanta Falcons can, can continue to play confident this weekend in San Francisco and to close out the season. And you just never know what's going to happen. All right, guys, that's going to do it here for the Falcons Audible presented by AT&T. So thank you so much for joining us on all of the different platforms that you get us from AtlantaFalcons.com, YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, or any of those other ones. I don't know if there are other ones, <laughs> but in this day and age, there might be other ways to get podcasts. We appreciate Either way, watch it. you joining us. He's DJ Shockley, Dave Archer. I'm Derek Rackley. Thanks so much. And we'll be back next week wrapping up the same old stuff and looking ahead. Thanks guys. <laughs>